Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and this is the fifth and final part of the competition between me and Steve from Tronics Fix where we have to repair toys from eBay, sell them again on eBay and they all have to be manufactured before the 1980s and when we decided on this challenge we thought it'd be a good one, I thought it'd be an easy one to do it's been far from easy. Finding toys before the 1980s that you can make a profit on is, I say, near enough impossible. So if you've been following this series so far, you've probably seen that there hasn't been a huge amount of profit made on, uh, any, well, there has on one of my items, but uh, the rest of them so far have been very poor, especially when you consider the time taken in actually fixing them up. But that doesn't mean that they're not interesting, and it is lovely seeing how some of the old toys are put together, because some of them are ingenious. You know, they really, they really are. The thinking behind them is uh, is fantastic. So now this toy here is very well packed. I think this might be from the 1950s, so we've got a lot of age to this. Really well packed. They've made their own box there, haven't they? Very well done. Right. Okay, so it comes in its box, which is always nice. In fact, if I open this carefully, I might be able to reuse the same packaging if I can repair this. If I can repair it. So what we're going to be doing is, after this fifth part now, we will be doing a conclusion part to see who's won and also talk about the, the figures and stuff because I haven't fully worked out my ones yet because obviously there's a lot of fees involved with the postage and the PayPal and eBay. So uh, yeah, that will, be, that will be the final part. All right, here we go. You can probably tell what it is. Triang, number one passenger train. So this is... Uh, a train set, basically, and I believe, I believe it's electric. So there we go, that's the box there. And look at that, they've stuck, they've stuck that picture onto the box. Yes, yeah, so and not in, not in bad condition, that box is pretty good. And here we have it here. Wow. What is this? Oh, look, that must be oil. That must be a little dropper for oil. Actually, I could do with one of them. That's quite handy. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice that that's included. So here we have it. It's very dusty. Got a nice bit of weight to it. Now, if you remember, in the first challenge I did with Steve, I did fix a Thomas the Tank engine. And it was running really nice by the end of it. And this looks very similar. It's got a nice bit of weight to it. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping that this will be repairable. So the rest are probably just going to be plastic. Yeah, this is just plastic now. Oh, okay, that one's missing there. You can see the little things that grab onto the next train. But they have made their own one. It might do the job, especially if that was painted black. And we've got a couple of carriages as well. Yeah, not too bad. They look, uh, they look okay. Obviously, we'll have to have a closer inspection of everything. Needs a good clean. It looks like it's been stored up in the attic for a long time. It's very dusty and also dirty as well. It's got plastic in here, which is kind of uh, coming away from the windows a bit. But I don't know whether, yeah, you can see there it's sort of coming away. But it all looks relatively complete. Triang made in England. That's a nice sign to see. So used to see it made in China. In fact, looking at that now does actually look weird. That looks really, really weird to see anything that's made in England. So that is nice, isn't it? it really is nice. Right, so we've got the track here. I'm, I'm presuming that this is going to need quite a bit of cleaning. But again, it's plastic with metal on the top. And, alright, that one looks broken there. This one's not broken. And they slot in. Oh, okay, that one's broken there as well. So it looks like probably a lot of the tracks are going to be broken. That one's broken there. Again, there's going to be nothing. I'm not going to be able to fix that. But as long as there's enough of the 
contacts to kind of go through and slot together. In fact, it's a nice way of doing it because with the Hornby, I don't know about nowadays, but the set that I've got, well, it's not Hornby, it's a kind of fake Hornby, but all it is is literally just these things. It's just tracks on the floor with the little bits going across, sleepers, let's call them, I don't know if that's the name, and then it's just these bits at the end. So the very fact that you do have an additional clip down the bottom is nice, and that does actually feel very sturdy. And it looks like maybe this is where you give it the voltage through here, possibly. Not sure. Now, I don't know if there's enough track. Oh, what's happening? Oh, hold on. What's happening here? What is this? Oh, it's, bat it's battery operated. It's not, well, it is electric, but it's battery operated. I thought it would be mains operated. Oh, and it looks like it takes a couple of those massive, you know, like for the massive torches you get. Let me show you, because I've actually, I've actually got one. All right, for the torches, these ones in here. Now, I don't know if they're the same voltage or not. I'll have to look into it. These massive ones here. Yeah. These ones here, so there's six volts. So I'm going to have to see if there's any sticker in here or anything to tell me what voltage it is. No, but it must be there, mustn't it? How am I going to? I'm going to have to go online to find out because maybe batteries years ago had a different uh, a different voltage. But if you look, so it's got the positive at the side here, and this is the positive. So the last one's positive. That's negative. So that must be. Is positive that doesn't say anything and that's negative so it must be like this that it goes now that's not that's not right is it that's not going to make contact with them because it needs to be at an angle oh no maybe there's specialist batteries that you need for this do you know what I mean because these need to be these need to be at an angle don't they to be able to use these ones on them Right, I'm going to have to look into what batteries are needed. Actually, it tells you there, positive and negative. That all looks good. Hold on. I wonder if these have been bent out of place. Well, that ain't going to fit in there, is it? So I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Now, what's what about this thing here? So this is this is the speed controller, reverse, forward, and I don't know what that red button's for. Would that be to turn it on and off. Okay, so it looks like quite a bit of work is needed. But in there, I can see. I tell you what, that reminds me of, and I can hear it. Listen to that. And if you have a look closely, let me get this torch set back up again, and I'll show you. If you have a look in here, you can see that there's like, can you see there's metal with like wire wrapped around it, and that was exactly the same as the scare electrics from years ago. You know the the race slot car racing, and you used to press the button, and it used to have a lever that used to go up and down the uh, the thing. So that looks exactly the same, up and down that sort of metal wire. Right, what I'm going to do is, let me show you what I paid for this, and then I'm going to have a look online and see what batteries are needed, because obviously I need to try and order them up. If they do exist, maybe they do not exist anymore. But if they don't exist, I should be able to sort of like jerry-rig something up where I can get this connected. So I'm thinking that from here, it goes into here, and then from here, it goes into the track. So you can see there's kind of like these banana-type plugs. They must go into here, I presume. So we're going to have to take this all apart and see if we can work out what's going on. That's if it can be. Yeah, we've got a little screw here, haven't we? So a couple of screws here. Hopefully we will be able to take it apart. Right, let me show you what I paid for it. Okay, so here it is. Triang Passenger Train Set Number 1 Box Spares or Repair. It was down as £35, but they were asking for best offers, and it was £6.95 postage. So I thought I'd see if I could get it for £35 with the postage. And if you have a look here, you can see that they did accept my offer of £28. So, 
there we go, accepted your offer of £28. So that means I got it in total for just under £35. So it would be £34.95. So you can see it's going to have to sell for quite a lot in order to make a profit once you take all the fees into account. And if I'm honest with you, I think it's probably going to be unlikely looking at the, the state of it. But let's not give up just yet. So what I now need to do is I need to go into Google and find out exactly what type of batteries these take because maybe they're not even manufactured anymore. So I'll be back when I know what's what. I've been looking for around 45 minutes on Google and there is so little information out there. There was one really good forum about six pages long but annoyingly every single one of the photos that people posted was just a black box with a white X in it meaning you couldn't click on it so they've been taken off or for some reason it wasn't compatible with my browser or something. So, uh, but for the reading up I did, people did say that they take the lantern batteries and they were saying they were called P996. Now, this is really confusing to me and I'll tell you why, it's not a problem, I'm going to buy some of these but I don't know how they fit because if you look here this looks kind of obvious, it has a plus here and a minus here, plus and minus and if you have a look this is minus and this is plus so you think okay no problem Vince, put one there and put one there, yeah? I mean that's what they're, that's what they're made for, they're kind of a perfect fit so obviously these are the batteries but this top is not lining up because let's say now it's got a little picture down here and it says here, reverse, I don't know what that means, stop and forward. Yeah, it must be S for stop. So let's say now this is going to go in this way round to this side. Yeah, and that's going to be the same as doing it here because then having it the right way up, reverse, stop and forward. So it has to go on this way here. This has to go in that way there. So that has to go in this way here. And that plus is not touching that wire up there at all. You know, this metal contacts. So, I don't know whether the metal contacts have been broken, snapped, or what, but definitely that's not going to make contact with that. So, the middle one was going to make contact, but the outer ones are not going to make contact, and that's the same on both of them, which is slightly confusing to me. So, what I'm going to do is, because there's no point in going any further than this, this I have to get this bit working before I can actually think about going on to here. And in fact, this is a... Why have we got a secondary control? If we've already got one that does stop forward and reverse, do you know what it must be? This must be one where it's just like on or off. So in other words, stop, uh, voltage one way, voltage the other way. And this is the one where it's actually like a scale electrics where you can adjust... The voltage so with this now we're going to have to put it to forward and then we're going to have to go like this I presume and then or well, maybe maybe we can control both of them just from the one lot of voltage because this might switch it round but uh, it's a slight little bit confusing because you think that this would just be an on and off switch but maybe it had the opportunity to maybe there was another model without this and you could just use this for forward and back but there definitely doesn't seem to be any varying degree if you look down there when I spin that it just goes this point here just goes onto the copper contacts, like so. Yeah, and up the top as well. So it doesn't look like there's any control apart from on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take this apart just to see if it becomes clearer what's going on because I'm quite confused at the moment with it. This should be really simple, but for some reason it's confusing me. So they're separate. When we go on to here, it's going to be putting the voltage one way, and when we go on to here, the voltage is another way. And these two bits hit against these bits here, so that's fine. Okay, so I've got myself two more Lantern batteries, and they were only £2.71 each, so very cheap, so hopefully they will uh, hopefully they will work okay. Now, these are 6 volts each. You know now that I'm getting a bit confused with this thing here. Well, let's sort of bring it back to basics. We know, because of the internet, it says that these trains run on 12 volts. So if these are 6 volts each, they have to be wired up in series, not parallel. So, for example, if it was parallel, what would happen is you would have uh, minus to minus and plus to plus and then all that would happen is you would get six volts coming out of here but it would be six volts for longer but these are wired up in series so it's going to be basically uh, plus here minus to plus 
and then minus coming out here. So you're joining basically the plus and the minus together here. And that way then they will be the same as in series. This is how I think it is anyway. So basically if you have the terminals of the batteries here and I've laid them out in the way that this top bit explains here. So basically we've got the minus and the positive connected together and then we have this plus coming out and this minus negative coming out and that will be 12 volts out on the two wires for example to connect a motor onto and run at 12 volts. Now, if you actually have a look here, they have joined these two together. So this must be what's joining the minus on this side to the plus on this side. The only thing is, nothing really fits. I think that there should be bits coming off here, because if you have a look there, it's not actually joining anything together. Remember, this is how the box tells you to lay it out. And if I make sure that that one touches the minus in the middle, can you see it's not big enough to touch the next one? So I think that uh, oh, unless it goes there, hold on, unless that bends up there, that bends up there, what would that be now? That would connect them two together. Ah, so maybe we just have to bend them around a bit because look, that's going to be the positive here, this is going to be the negative this side, just like our drawing going out to the motor and then the other two are going to be connected up there so it looks like I have to kind of bend them around to suit this configuration here the weird thing is it doesn't look like these are able to be bent but it, at the same time it doesn't look like anything else was ever soldered onto them so like, that's what's kind of confusing me but at least I understand now if I was to connect these two together and bring the wires out from here in theory it should work and that kind of makes sense here because if you look at this the middle section doesn't have to do anything it's only the outer two points to have to do anything and that's these two points here so the middle two are just connected together to make it in series and then these outer two are going to be here and here and depending on how we connect them together it's either going to be basically going from like positive to would it be hold on because remember this is going to change direction isn't it how does that change direction because all it's doing is connecting them both up Oh, of course, sorry, because we're connecting one wire to one side. So it's the same as flipping the wires over, isn't it? Because that top section there is attached to one wire and the bottom section is attached to the other wire. So, for example, that way it's going to be this wire on top is going to be plus and this one's going to be minus. And this one, that way, is this top one's going to be minus and this is going to be plus. So it's the same as putting the battery straight onto a motor and just turning it round. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to try and work out if there's any way that this can possibly work. And I'm going to hoover out the box and everything because there's kind of horrible wood fibres and just dirt and looks like it's been up in the attic for a while. So I'm going to give it all a clean out and then uh, it'll be nicer to work on. So next time you see this, hopefully I will have got my head round this. OK, so here's the batteries and then this thing's going to go on top. And if you have a look, the two negatives, they've got black caps on at the moment, but they're going to be in contact. But have a look at these other two. They are not in contact. So I think what I need to do is I need to extend these outwards. So I reckon originally these would have had another piece sticking out, like a, uh, like a right angle or like a T or something. Maybe like a T and then it could be possibly installed both way around. It could be that way. Or that way, couldn't it? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know, know what this material is. It's nice and hard. I don't know whether it's some sort of like brass covered steel or so. I haven't got a clue what it is. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a soup can and I'm going to cut out a T from here, flatten it out. And then I'm going to put it onto here and try to solder it on or clip it on or do something. Because there's no way... There's no way that this is going to transmit any power through to the train. The train might well work. This might be the problem. So that's what I'm going to be working on now. OK, so I've been chopping up this can here and uh, this is what it looks like. Now, annoyingly, I did it the gold side up thinking that it would uh, blend in with it, but it doesn't seem to be as conductive as the silver side. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to rough it all up and then basically I need to try to solder it onto there. So I'm going to get the Dremel tool, I'm going to sand this down back to back to chrome. What I did when I was making it, as you can see, I kind of folded the edges round so they're not going to, hopefully not going to cut fingers when, uh, when it's on there. And then this part here I'm actually going to fill with solder. So I'm going to put like a solder bead on it. And then I'm hoping, although it's not going to look good, the fact is it just needs to work. 
I, I don't know whether it's going to make a good enough contact to work. I hope it will. So that's what I'm working on. Okay, I've got it working, sort of, but with limitations. As you can see, I'm putting a lot of downward pressure on this side. I'll show you why in a minute. So at the moment, I'm on the two wires, and you can see 12 volts, because 6 volt battery plus 6 volt battery is 12 volts, and that's plus. Now when I go to S for stop in the middle, it should go to next to nothing. There you go, 0.3 of a volt, and drop in. And now if we go to forward, it should be minus 12. Yeah, and obviously if I swap these leads around, it would be the opposite way. So minus 12, and over here, plus 12. But, watch this. Okay, well it stayed on there, but now if I go to here, it will probably drop. Okay, well it hasn't, but that was just luck. Because, if you have a look, you see the bottom of this box is okay this side, but it's not this side, it's broken. So I'm going to have to, there you go, it's popped off now. So I'm going to have to put some kind of cable tie or something around here to fasten it. I'm thinking that once you put these in, it was probably designed for the batteries to stay in there because it's going to be in the stop position. Uh, I mean, it's not ideal at all, but this is this is what I've done here. You can see that I've put those bits on there, and I've soldered them all up. So now, they're okay to touch. It doesn't feel like it's going to cut your finger off, because on the edges, I've kind of filled it with solder, and on these bits, I've bent them all around and bashed them to make them a little bit blunt. But it just looks... it looks rubbish, but... If it works, it works. It's just, I don't know how reliable it is going to be. But now what I have to do is I have to work out a way to try to get this side to stay to stay down. So I'm going to have to use some sort of like cable ties. Might make a little hole here to go up through here and do a cable tie or something like that, a releasable cable tie. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But even that took me absolutely ages. So we'll be back to it a little bit later. Okay, so I found a solution. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just going to put some silicon grease down on these contacts here, just to ensure a nice good connection. Okay, this is a solution. It's a simple one, but it works. So basically, all I've done is cut a little slit in this side of it here, nice and high up, and I'm feeding a cable tie through it. But this is a releasable cable tie, so you won't have to keep putting new cable ties in. So watch this. You put it in there, and you can hear it clicking, and it won't go backwards that way. Then to release it, you just need to push in this tab here, and you see it will release. So this means now we can lock it up, and then when the batteries need to be changed, or if it's not going to be played in a while and you're taking the batteries out, just press the button and release it. So let's put this in the way it should be. So it's going to be like that. It's going to be like this. And now all we're going to do is pass the cable tie through this little hole here, like so. Lock this one into place like you would normally. And now you can see the pressure it's under there, but watch this, the cable tie will just close that up. There you go. Right. That's nice and tight. That's not going to go anywhere. And you can see now that it is all locked into place. So I'm actually quite happy with that. Now let's see if it's reading 12 volts. So we're going to go to volts DC. I'll try and do this one hand. Also these need a clean as well, so they might not be giving the best connection. So at the moment it's not reading anything. Let's put it into reverse. There we go. 12 volts and let's put it into forward. Again, minus 12, hold on a second. There. Minus 12 volts. So minus 12 volts, plus 12 volts. Stop in the middle, and forward. So I think that that is going to work okay. I'm actually happy with the way that's come out in the end, because although it's far from ideal, it, uh, it wasn't working at all, was it? You know, those things were missing. And also, there was an awful lot of pressure pushing it up, and I was wondering how to tie it down. So I'm actually pleased with that. So now what I'm going to do is, before I go any further, I'm going to uh, try to connect this up to here, 
Or actually, I should just try and put this on the track and then see if the trains move a bit, because I might need to take the trains apart, or I might not. They might just all might need a bit of a clean with the wheels and stuff like that. So let me set up a little bit of track. OK, I've wired up this speed controller thing to the battery power pack. But it's not really... it's working, but it's not really giving me the results I would expect. So, for example, it's uh, this looks like it's the kind of off position in the middle, which is correct. You can see there it's reading zero volts. But yet yeah, I would have expected it to start off maybe at like 6 volts or something and then work its way up to 12. But if you have a look, straight away we're at 10. But it will jump around and then a few seconds later it might be at 12 volts. OK, let's go a bit more. And then sometimes in the middle of the travel it can drop. See, can you see we're at halfway but yet it's reading, it was reading 12 there a second ago. So let's uh, go all the way. doesn't really seem to make any sense but the good thing is it is going between plus and minus and just in case you're curious obviously if I switch it here to forward then that will become minus there you go let's go back to that one so you see 12.9 it's all the way now and then if we go all the way to this side it will be minus but again it's not really Maybe it'd be different when I have the trains on when there's a load on, but right now it's kind of giving weird results. But it definitely is working to some description anyway. And if we put it to here and hit this red button, which looks like it's been snapped off, but if you watch it will drop the voltage. Yeah, there you go, so we're down to zero. But then when we let go, it comes back on again. So it's just like a brake switch. It's not... Uh, it's just like to cut the power, but it doesn't stay off. I wonder if I was to poke it down further would it go off oh no it's gone okay well that's no good <laughs> right I've got to see if I can try and take this thing apart annoyingly they're riveted so I'm going to struggle to get those off unless I can crush them ever so slightly okay this is the inside of the speed controller thing and if you have a look it's quite simple so basically we have one, we have the main wires going in here from the battery pack. One goes onto the coil this side, and one goes onto the coil this side. And all that happens is, is these are wires just wrapped around here. And uh, this part here is basically dead, and this part here is dead. And if you uh, look at the bottom switch there, you can see this is sort of in the off position. And then when you move it around to here, it's basically rubbing against both of those coils until we get to that part there, which is the maximum, and then vice versa when we go to there, that's the maximum. So I suppose that's the maximum because that bit the copper is going straight onto that cable up there. So while it's here, really, that should be reading less because I would say that the resistance is a lot higher when it's over there. So I'm not sure why it's not reading less there. I'm going to have a little play around with it. might just need a bit of a clean. But the very fact it's reading high all along is a little bit little bit confusing to me. But uh, then what happens is from there it goes on that track there and can you see it goes onto this like coil and basically when we press this button it separates from that little bit of metal so it when it's when you don't press the button it goes through this coil here and it goes onto this contact here and then this green wire goes onto that bottom track there so basically these are the ones that will go to the train or to the train track so it goes around this coil again I'm not sure what that coils for but when you press this button it uh, it basically kills the circuit and that's why you get no output from here so I'm just going to see if I can work out why there's uh, it's the same voltage here as here because I would have thought it would be less because otherwise what's the point of having this you might as well just have a switch instead Okay, so I've just been cleaning it up because there was quite a bit of corrosion that was sticking a lot of the wires together. So I've been trying to just clean it to separate them back up again. So I think I'm going to put it back together now and see what, uh, see what happens because this side here doesn't actually look too bad. What I'm not sure about is why you need this kind of like electromagnet thing. If you have a look, it looks like it sticks to there. So when that sticks to there, it's going to cut the circuit. I wonder, is it to do with overheating? And then once it gets so hot, maybe it sticks to there to, to stop any more power going through. 
rather than you pressing this kill switch here. I don't know, but that definitely looks like a, uh, when voltage goes through there, it looks like it would suck this bit into there. Can't think of what else it would be for. So I'm going to put it back together and see if that's made any difference. Okay, so I've just temporarily got it set up here now. Now the track's dirty, the train's dirty, but it looks like it is wanting to do something. I can hear it uh, every now and then wanting to go. Let's try the other way. There we go. I think once we clean the track up, that it might actually... I reckon once that loosens up, we'll be able to get that going. So, what I'm going to do is, I was watching the Steve's last video from Tronics Fix, and I seen down in the messages, somebody said to clean the track, what you can do, which I think is a real good idea, is get a coin. So, for example, like uh, I might use a 2p coin in the UK, and rub it up and down the track. And that's supposed to kind of take off the, the tarnish from the top. And with the wheels, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure, I think I'm going to do the track first and then I think I'm going to worry about the wheels after. So I think this is what the person meant. Apologies, I didn't write down the name, but I think it's a real good idea. So let's just make sure that all of this is disconnected. There we go. And I think it's just a case of getting the coin and rubbing it up and down. And I suppose the metal against metal will clean it up, possibly. Yeah, it's definitely starting to work. What a great idea. So if you have a look now, can you see this bit here starting to get shiny? So you can see the rust and corrosion on this bit here. Can you see it's really dull? Well, let me just do it on the one track just to show you. I'm just going to keep doing that and then what I'm going to do is on the locomotive here I'm just going to get this pound coin and I'm just going to rub it around the wheels here just to try to get them a little bit clean because with this pound coin here I've got little grooves on it every now and then I'm going to have to put it on the track to get the wheels to rotate but I think that will clean them up Right, I've only just started with the cleaning, but look at it, it's already starting to move. A little helping hand. And again, you can see it's doing more than it did before. Now back the other way. Oh, the back wheels have come off, hold on. Oh no, they haven't. you know I think more more cleaning clean up the wheels clean up all the track I think eventually we will get there so that's what I'm going to be doing now for the next however long it's going to take so I thought I'd take the body off the train it was really easy there was just a long bolt going through this funnel here into the front and then it just levered it just levered off so this is the bolt here and it looks like this train is called the Princess Elizabeth so I don't know whether that is based on a real train or not there we go so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some IPA and I'm going to give this a real good clean because it does look quite dusty and grimy in here. So if I get those contacts nice and clean in there, hopefully it will uh, it might start working quite well. Right, so this is what I'm using.
just going to see what it runs like now. Right, it seems to be getting stuck on the track here all the time, so I think the hesitation is purely the track and not the train. That's what I believe. Okay, so I've got some watch grease and also some watch oil, and that's what I'm going to grease it up with. So I'm just going to grease up the worm gear and then everything else is going to get oiled. That sounds quieter. I did is I sprayed this on the uh, brushes of the motor and now check it out. Just seeing if it goes uh, if it does go slow. Maybe it does, you know. Maybe this is a proper speed controller then. It's hard to tell because it's still hesitant. Anyway, I'm well happy with that. It's really starting to get going now. I've noticed that at the back of the train here there's quite a bit of damage. You can see where this thing should stop here to uh, stop the back wheels from going out, but this side can go further, which is a bit of a shame. I might have a look around the box later to see if it's hanging around in there or not. Now I was using a coin, but I find that just a cotton bud with a bit of IPA is working much better. So if you have a look now, this side is completely clean. Let's go on to a part of the track that hasn't been done yet. See if you look how much is coming off. So I think if I go around the whole track doing that, I think that might end up I think the coin's good if there's rust, but if this is just kind of tarnished, I think maybe IPA might be a better job. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Okay, so I've uh, cleaned up the track and a lot of dirt's come off it. The weird thing is, the more I do it, the more dirt comes off it. So I don't know whether you just have to keep on cleaning or is it having some reaction? Is the metal having some reaction with the IPA and just constantly creating kind of like I don't know, bits of metal. I haven't got a clue, but I was going round it and round it. It didn't matter how much I rubbed it. Every time I use a cotton bud on it, it was just coming up black. But anyway, let's uh, let's get this train on. And there you go. Yeah, it's off. Yay! Yeah, it's made it all the way round. Well, let's see if it'll go the other way. Well, that's a bit more hesitant going backwards, isn't it?
Well, it's certainly not as fast as I would have hoped. I think that I still got slight issues with the uh, with the track. But the thing is, it is working. It was working. Let's see if I can go forward. Right, let's see what it needs. Is it a trap problem? Don't know. I don't know if that's track or train. Okay, let's see if it can go a little bit slower. Thing is, I've got a feeling if I kill the speed, it's just going to stop. Right, so it's definitely struggling on that bit there, isn't it? On that bit of track. So I would say that that's a track problem there. Right, so that's it slower. So the speed control does work. It's just that the uh, the track's not allowing it to work as good as it should do. I think the back wheels have come off. Yeah, the back wheels have come off. But it's okay, it is okay. I'm gonna get a few carriages, see if it's strong enough to pull the carriages. Carriages are on it now. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see it work again after all these years, but it should, uh, it should be working a lot better. I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna clean the track more. And also what I need to do is you can see like there's a broken wire here, so this will need to be soldered back into here. So I'm gonna to have to take the remains of the wire out of there and then put the new wire in and try to put fresh solder in there. Maybe when I do all of that, you see, the connection will be better everywhere. Maybe it's a kind of slightly bad connection here, slightly bad connection on the track and all those bits are adding up. Try it backwards. Well, the train is strong enough to uh, pull. No, it's not there, is it? Right, okay, let's uh, clean up the track more. Let's try to get it working better because it isn't great at the moment. So really there's not a lot for me to do apart from clean, clean, and do a bit more cleaning. Solder this one here, and then we'll see how it performs at the very end. So I've just soldered up the new connection into there, and to make it stronger I've got some of that heat shrink stuff that you heat up and it melts down. So basically I bought a whole load of it from eBay for few pounds, they're not expensive, and I'm just cutting them up and then what I'm doing is, I'm sliding them over so obviously you have to use one that's bigger, and then I'm getting to, them to roughly the right position there, and now I'm just going to heat them up. So if I just get my, you can use a hair dryer, but I've just got my soldering station here, so I'm just using the, the hot air, and you will see it will all shrink down. There we go. And now that should make a, a better connection because where it's flexing all the time it's got a bit more protection because the sleeve has actually gone onto the bit at the very end, the contact at the end. So I'm just going to do that on each of them.
Now with these, if you heat them from the middle and then work their way out, it will go better. So uh, not that it really matters on something this small, but if you had a really long one to do, then start at the middle and then work your way out to either end. So if you twist it, then it applies it all evenly all the way round. Yeah, I'm well happy with that. I think they're going to be much stronger now. And while I'm here, I'm just going to clean up each of the ends with a bit of this wet and dry paper. So I'm just going to try and clean out the box a bit and also I'm going to try and fix the corners where it's, uh, where it's broken here, just with a little bit of this gum tape. You can see how much the staples have reacted with the cardboard over the years. Every one of these are staples. And the way the box is made is kind of nice. So if you have a look here, we've actually got a cardboard box underneath it. There's nothing in it, it's just an empty box, but it's just to make everything flat. Apparently I've been told a way to clean boxes is with lighter fluid and apparently it doesn't take the ink off but yet it cleans it. So I haven't tried it and I haven't actually got any lighter fluid but a few people said that in the comments of one of my last videos. So with this tape you basically just wet it on the gum side. And then it allows you to repair the boxes from the inside like that. And also that side there. That's the inside's done. There's nothing I can do about this corner here because it's missing. So it's just going to be left like that. And that will give it a bit more strength. Okay, we are finished at long last and it has been a bit of an epic with all the constant cleaning. There was just so much to do on this one. But I typed in Princess Elizabeth into the internet and look at this one here. Now personally I don't know anything about trains but even if you don't like trains you've got to admire the engineer and that's gone into that. So it's a different colour scheme than this one here but it definitely looks to be the same, in my opinion, it looks to be the same engine because it sort of has the funnels and everything in the same place. So I think, I think it's the same one. So obviously it is based on a real train. Now let me show you this thing going around the track. So I'm just going to get it on. Let's move this a little bit lower. So let's get it on. Now it's working, it's just not working very well. And a lot of the time it hasn't got the power to pull the carriages. And a lot of times the back wheels come off because of that brake in there. So if you have a look here now, Watch this. Right, so that's backwards, hold on, let's go forward. But it's definitely working a lot better than it did. But it wouldn't have the same amount of speed as that little Hornby uh, train, the Thomas the Tank Engine one, Duck, that I did in the last series. The backwards is definitely uh, a bit slower. But it is... It does look like the speed controller works because you can see now it's going slower. So I mean everything is working, it's just not great. There you go. Okay, so it's uh, seized up now. Is it going to free itself? There we go. I think a lot of the problem is to do with the track itself because when I actually take the train off and put the wires here straight onto it, it does work pretty fast. So watch this now. If I take these wires out here, and if I put them on the wheels here, 
and here, and then turn it on. Let me just do it so I'm not holding the wheels. Hold on. Now, if you short these together, it clicks on the inside, so that means that, that that's what that's for. Look at that. Listen to that. It's lovely looking at the little blue sparks flying out from here. I mean, there's some serious speed on that there. So yeah, if I short these two wires together, it clicks in here, and then you have to press this little button to reset it. So obviously, it's to stop short. You remember that coil that I seen earlier? So what I'm gonna do now is, let's pop the carriages on, and let's see if there's enough strength to get these carriages working. So here it is with all the carriages on, and it is a nice looking train. So I would have said that this would have been quite expensive when it was new, because there's actually quite a lot of detail in my opinion, there's quite a lot of detail on it. So, watch this now. So you can see, you can just about pull them round, but it struggles. But maybe it doesn't help that it's battery operated. And now let's try and go backwards. Let's see if it will go backwards or not. Go on. There we go. Actually, this is the best this worked for a long time. So it's behaving itself for the video. Yeah, but you can see it's struggling. Let's go back the other way. No, see now it's now it's stopped. Let's give it a helping hand. There we go. Right, so I'm gonna call it a day there. Okay, that's departed from the uh, carriages. Let's see if I can get it back. Come on. There we go. Yay! At least that works. So that's it, I'm going to call it a day on this one. Overall, I'm happy. A lot of work went into it, mostly cleaning. But uh, it's nice to see it moving again after so many years. So that is it for this competition. All five episodes have been done. So what I'm going to do now is next Friday there will be a completion video, like a conclusion of what happened, who won, me or Steve, and the exact profits and stuff that were made in this one here. So uh, I think it's a nice one to end on, and it's nice again to have something so old working again. So that's it, I'm going to pop this on eBay, and uh, you're not going to know what it sells for in this episode. You will find out in the conclusion video, and then we'll see who's won, UK or US. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.